Starting off with number five, we have the mystery of the sunken treasure in the East River. So we can assume there are a lot of crazy things in the East River, but I bet you never imagined that there might be a small fortune down there. You see, during the American Revolutionary War, a 28-gun Royal Navy warship named the HMS Husser was navigating the treacherous waters of the East River when it went down. In the summer of 1779, British positions around New York became more vulnerable when the French army joined forces with General George Washington's troops just north of New York City. In November of that year, the ship was loaded with payroll and other valuables. These valuables were supposedly meant for British troops when the ship set sail to Gardner's Bay. Despite repeated warnings against the treacherous waters of what was known as Hellgate, the captain decided to take his chances with the risky narrow shortcut. The Hellgate had earned its ominous names due to thousands of ships that met their demise in its treacherous waters. As the Hussar pressed on, it struck an obstacle known as Pot Rock, which would probably have a completely different meaning if the obstacle was still there today. You see, there used to be a whole bunch of giant rocks that ships had to navigate through to get through that area. But in the late 1800s, they blew them all up with dynamite, clearing the waterway. Unfortunately for the captain, the pot rock sank the 124-foot ship into 90 feet of water. So rumors quickly spread that the ship had gone down with a significant amount of gold and silver. For several centuries, fortune hunters have been scouring the waters of Hellgate for any sign of the lost treasure. Despite numerous expeditions and countless hours spent searching, the treasure has never been found. Now, some believe that the British managed to recover the treasure secretly. Others believe it still lies beneath the murky depths of the East River, which obviously isn't the most ideal place to go diving and looking for a treasure. Looking for treasure in the East River is like looking for gold in a giant bowl of New York City soup. Like there's sewage in there, probably a lot of dead bodies. There's also rats and maybe even some mutant fish. The mystery of the missing treasure remains unsolved and unfound to this day, while thousands of people are commuting daily over, under, and possibly through it, completely unaware that they could be passing right by millions of dollars of lost treasure. Moving on to number four, we have the Guggenheim treasure, believed to be hidden somewhere in the waters of Arthur Kill, between, of all places, Staten Island in New Jersey. The story begins on a still moonlit night on September 26, 1903. The tugboat Herald was tasked with transporting around 7,700 silver and lead bars, leaving from what's known today as South Street Seaport, past the Statue of Liberty, and towards the Asarco smelters of Port Amboy, New Jersey. Now these smelters and the silver belong to the illustrious Guggenheim family. Unfortunately, somewhere in the Arthur Kill Tidal Strait, the Herald tipped, sending most of the silver bars to the bottom of the waterway. So the barge's deckhands describe later by the salvage company's owner as the dumbest skunks I ever had to deal with because they hadn't noticed that the silver bars were missing until the docking at dawn. Yeah, that's a lot of wealth to lose in the water. So a secret salvage effort was immediately launched and they managed to recover about 85% of the silver bars. But up to 1,400 of these bars were never found and the value of the lost silver has only grown over the years with some estimates reaching up to $26 million today. In 2009, a man named Ken Nays of AquaSurvey made an attempt to retrieve the lost treasure. Despite these efforts, the silver remains at the bottom of the Arthur Kill. But like the East River, there's probably a lot of dead bodies there as well. Coming in at number three, we have the secret treasure hidden by Byron Price. In 1982, mystery author and publisher Byron Price published a book titled The Secret, A Treasure Hunt. Now this book captivated the imagination of readers across the country. So Price went out and buried 12 ceramic casts, each containing a key that could be exchanged for a precious gemstone. Each cast was hidden in a different location in North America, and each was accompanied by a poem in a painting providing clues to its whereabouts. New York City is believed to be the home of one of these elusive treasures, and it's strongly suspected that this cast is buried somewhere in Brooklyn. Now, enthusiasts have poured over these clues for decades, trying to decipher the cryptic hints left by Price. The painting and verses are said to combine local history and landmarks, creating a complex puzzle that requires both knowledge and intuition to solve. Despite the passage of time, only three of the casts have ever been found, none of which were in New York City. This has only fueled the determination of treasure hunters who come through the parks, monuments, and historical markers in Brooklyn, hoping to discover a hidden cast. Prospect Park, with its hidden mirad of statues, fountains, and hidden nooks, is a popular suspect among the hunters. Tragically, Price passed away in 2005, taking with him the secrets to the precise location, and his family has continued to assume the responsibility of honoring the hunt. So while hipsters are busy trying to find the coolest new coffee spot in Brooklyn, you could be finding the key to a gem worth thousands. Just remember to bring a shovel and a really good excuse as to why you're digging in the park. Coming in Number two, we have the lost treasure of Captain K. 
kid. Stories of pirates and hidden treasure bring out everyone's inner child. But what if these stories were true and happened right in your backyard? Captain William Kidd, a famous privateer turned pirate, sailed around the New York City Harbor and around the Jersey Shore. And his legend brings all of these questions to the forefront. Now, Captain Kidd was born in 1645 Scotland. Before his infamous expeditions, he lived in New York City. His aspirations led him to England in 1695, where he joined the Royal Navy as a commander of a privateer ship. Captain Kidd amassed wealth primarily targeting French ships. During this time, he would occasionally dock with pirates. However, his crew's greed led to mutiny, which Kidd quashed by killing the mutineer William Moore. Now, this incident marked Kidd's full transition into piracy. Eventually, this led to Kidd finding himself wanted as a pirate by the British Crown. In a desperate attempt to clear his name, Kidd sailed toward Boston, stopping at various locations in New Jersey along the way. It was said that there, Kidd bribed local politicians with his treasure, hiding significant portions of it throughout the Garden State. Captain Kidd was eventually arrested in Boston. He claimed to have hidden 40,000 pounds worth of treasure, which would be worth about 2 million today. But rumors suggest the actual amount could have been as much as 400,000 pounds. Found guilty of piracy and murder, Captain Kidd was executed in 1701. But the mystery of his hidden treasure lived on. Several places along the shores of New York and New Jersey are speculated to be possible sites of Captain Kidd's hidden treasure, including Sandy Hook Bay, the last place Kidd anchored before his final journey to Raritan Bay. One fascinating site is Cliffwood Beach, where two large elm trees known as Kidd's Rangers supposedly served as markers for Kidd's buried treasure. Even today, you might find people digging around Cliffwood Beach's shores and dunes. Now, some Spanish gold and silver coins have been found at this location, though whether or not they actually belong to Kidd remains unconfirmed. Just north of Sandy Hook, 17th century Spanish gold coins were discovered on an island, later named Money Island. Obviously, this site has been heavily searched over the years. Although Raritan Bay has long since eroded its shores, the discovery of these coins fuels the speculation that more treasure could be hidden nearby. And finally, at number one, we have the lost treasure of Dutch Schultz. Arthur Fliegenheimer, better known as Dutch Schultz, was a notorious mobster during the Prohibition era, well known for his ruthlessness and vast criminal empire, which spanned bootlegging, gambling, and other illicit activities. But his empire was constantly under threat by rival gangs, and also law enforcement. As pressure mounted, Schultz became increasingly paranoid about the safety of his wealth. In a bid to protect his fortune, he is believed to have hidden a substantial amount of money and valuables in a waterproof safe somewhere in the Catskill Mountain. The legend goes in 1935, fearing an imminent arrest, Schultz ordered his most trusted men to bury the safe in a remote location. The treasure, estimated to be worth millions of dollars, was said to include cash, gold coins, bonds, and jewelry. Now, Schultz's paranoia wasn't unfounded. Shortly after supposedly hiding these valuables, he was indicted on tax evasion charges. In October 1935, Schultz was shot by assassins in Newark, New Jersey. As he lay dying in his hospital bed, he reportedly rambled about his hidden treasure, mentioning the Catskills and a buried waterproof safe. Despite efforts to extract more precise information about the location, he took the precise location of his treasure to his grave. Since then, treasure hunters and adventurers have been drawn to the Catskills, with countless theories about the treasure's whereabouts. If you're gonna go searching for this, I highly recommend you do this with a group, because you do not want to become one of the missing 411 cases, which also happens in that area. And also UFO sightings. That would really suck if the aliens took the treasure. I guess it's better the treasure than us. And there you have it. Five incredible tales of lost treasures that are still out there. If you're able to go out and actually hunt for these treasures and you find something, please invite me to your celebration party. Just kidding, I'd rather you just subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell. Thanks again for watching everyone, hopefully I'll see you in the next video.